Let's look at muscles, which is even less. I'm not going to pull muscles out. Where's my light marker at, y'all? Here it is. function huh? what's a byproduct of that movement that gives us body temperature provides heat it moves other things like our blood and our hair and stuff like that, right? Smooth muscle. You got about 600 of them in your body. It's really easy to name them once you start learning what the, the words mean in them. People always freak out over that. That's about it. There's not much more for that. But let's look at some of the, the tests we can uh, check to see what's going on with our muscles and our blood. We're phlebotomists, right? We're drawing blood samples. I'm looking on page 80. This is going to come back to haunt you. We're going to learn them in like chapter 8, 9, and 10 and other ones. But if you don't know what a myoglobin is or a troponin or creatinine kinase, eventually, by the time you take your certification test, you're going to be in trouble. You gotta know what these words mean eventually. So anytime our heart is damaged, uh, you can see creatinine kinase MB or CKMB as abbreviation there. That that protein or molecule is released from damaged cardiac cells. When they start to get hurt, they release this creatinine kinase, and we can measure how much is in their blood and say, oh, that's a heart attack. When we have dying blood cells or or say somebody, uh, say a lady falls in her kitchen and lays there for two days before somebody can get to her or finds her, she'll have something called rhabdomyolysis where her muscles are dying. There'll be a high elevation of certain chemicals in her blood that can tell about that. That's, that's a pretty terrible story, but it happens. Okay. Um, skin. A little bit more interesting for us. Page 80. Also known as the integumentary. What does skin do for us? Protection from in germs, basically. We would be really easily infected if we didn't have skin like stopping germs and just landing on our body. Remember thermal regulation is important. Our temperature, sweating. We got special glands that cause sweat. We actually have two types of glands. Okay, this is sort of important for you to know. You'll see this question again, possibly certification, but the two types of glands are, let me, uh, let me do it like I did the special bone cells. Okay, these are glands in skin. The first one is called a sweat gland, aka pseudoriferous, but usually known by sweat gland. Where do we find these at? Actually, what do they secrete? Water. They are most numerous on the palms. 
feet. You get sweaty palms before, sweaty feet. There's a lot of sweat glands there. And all it does is excrete water to help us cool by evaporation, right? Just that's what I mean by water. And then the other one is called a sebaceous gland. Secretes sebum. And sebum's good for all kinds of things. It gives our hair natural lubricant, makes it some oil on it, right? Sometimes it can be overproductive, it can be really oily. But it's antimicrobial, means it keeps bacteria away. The sebum stuff does. It's, it keeps us waterproofed. Hint, hint, hint. So we don't just, our hair just don't dry out and be brittle. Sebum um, comes from sebaceous glands, and they're usually coupled with a uh, hair. What kind of muscle is that? Smooth or cardio? Mm -hmm. Right, it raises the hair, right? And goosebumps. Now, I need to, um, let's see, it is two, how y'all doing? We're gonna take a break or we keep going? Okay. Okay. We can stop and do something different. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about skin, okay? So let me, uh, I'm going to erase this side of the board, but you, on your notes, you can go from here on over if you want. Keep the grids going. Actually, I'll just erase this. Bring it down here. <clears throat> Why do you think I'm getting ready to tell you a little bit more about the skin? Because we're, we're looking for a vein underneath it, right? Okay, so take good notes here. Skin is one of the, the most important organ systems other than cardiac that I can tell you about, I believe, for phlebotomists. Let's see, where's my purple marker? Layers. You got Epidermis. Dermis. Maybe what they call a subcutaneous layer. Some books, some people group that with the skin, some don't. So I'm gonna say sub subcutaneous for you. It's right there in that diagram. And actually I need to bring my I need to bring this down a little bit. Okay, so the dermis is where most of the magic happens in your skin. This is pretty much all dead skin cells that just provide protective covering, okay? The dermis is where you got all located are your glands, where the, the hair roots are, uh, sensory organs, blood vessels, um, Smooth muscle. And when we when we do a finger poke for our diabetics, the 
blood vessels that are in this layer I'm talking about, they're microscopic, right? They're too tiny compared to this one. So when we poke the dermis, we're getting capillary blood. I'll tell you more about those later. Subcutaneous is where you have fat, connective tissue, that anchors your skin to the muscle or the, the structures below it. So when you get an intradermal injection for your tuberculosis test, that means they're going between this layer and between this layer. When you get a subcutaneous injection, it just goes below the fat. That's why you get, you can see something that says sub-Q sometimes, like insulin. And then you get an intramuscular injection, an IM, which is all the way down to the muscle. What do you think medicine would be absorbed faster, in a muscle or in a subcutaneous layer? Do you have a reason for it? That's right. You're on you're right track, but let me, let me lay some knowledge on you. Your muscles have a lot of blood flow because they do a lot of what? Work. They do a lot of work. So they get a ton of blood flow to help move nutrients and waste and fill in and out. And so if you inject the medicine all the way down in your muscle, it's going to be dissipated and spread faster. All right. I, I wanted you to, to not... Um, it just kind of gives you a, an idea of, yeah, there is blood flow here, but there's way more down there in your muscles too, okay? <clears throat> That's just the FYI stuff. You don't need to know that. There's also another important chemical that is deposited on these cells. You see these cells in this layer up here? Right here. So this pink one. You can kind of think of the idea as that's where stem cells or new cells live. There are cells that will sit here all day long and never move, stay just like they are. They will copy themselves and then push that copy up. And then you just get a bunch of copies all pushing those cells up into layers, but this layer never moves because they're stem cells. And as they get further away from that base layer, they start to become flat. See how they're flat, but they're a little bit thicker down at the bottom. Flat, but a little bit more thicker towards the bottom here. It's because as they get further to the surface, they get dehydrated, the cells die because they're getting further away from this blood flow right here. And as that happens, they get deposited with a chemical or a protein called keratin. I know y'all have heard of that. I'm just going to put, this is just a term. That's a really short explanation. So I'm looking at the bottom of page 80, on the right side. See where it says epidermis in blue? Does everybody see that in the spot? If you go maybe one sentence down, it'll say, callus is epidermis that has extra amounts of the structural protein keratin, which provides a tough protective layer in regions subject to frequent abrasion or impact. Keratin is also the principal component of hair and nails, which are dead tissues formed from living follicles within the skin. Keratin is an important word for you to know. Hint, hint, hint. It's what your hair is made of. You see it on shampoo bottles and advertising commercials. So it makes things waterproof and tough. Where do you think you experience frequent abrasions 
or impact on your skin. Bottom of your feet. You walk around barefoot before, you may ever play the guitar. You got callus on the ends of our fingers where it's really be taking a beating. You ever gotten a blister from shoveling or sweeping or something like that? Keratin will build up in those areas, make them more tough to withstand mechanical stress. Okay, so next, make sure you remember what keratin is. You'll see it again, I promise. All right, I'm going to stop there. Call it a day on that.